Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point 8FR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. Last segment of this Wednesday edition, 888-589-8840. There have been some energy in our conversation today, but I think what we need to remember on this impeachment issue, Andy McCarthy's right. If that is the solution, the only way that's going to happen is if the American people insist on it, if the American people put pressure on their elected representatives. So that means the fire's got to start somewhere. There, there has to be some energy that builds in the American people that says, look, this is, the, this is the resolution. This is the solution to this problem. We elected you. We sent you to Washington, D.C. to solve problems, to deal with problems according to the Constitution. So we're going to put pressure on you to, to pursue a constitutional resolution uh, to this crisis by, by uh, filing articles of impeachment and debating that, and if they're filed, conducting in a, a trial in the Senate. We're going to insist that you do that. It's the only way it's going to happen, and that's why we want to spend time on it on this program because the nature of the issue is such uh, that you don't want impeachment to be done for light reasons. So we need to accurately understand whether there are sufficient offenses to qualify for impeachment under the Constitution. That's part of the educational function here of Focal Point and AFR Talk. Make sure that you have the constitutional education that you need the awareness of the facts that you need to be able to make up your own mind about whether that would be a good solution in this case or not. One uh, last soundbite before I take just a minute to talk about the Mississippi race. Uh, clip number three, uh, uh, Lene, this is ABC, a report on ABC. And the interesting thing here is, you know, we, we've seen how the Democrats are bailing on Obama now. Uh, liberal media, one after another, is talking about what a misstep this is. They're back on their heels. This blew up in their face. They didn't see this coming. And here's ABC. Listen to what ABC has to say. But much of what the White House said initially about the deal for Sergeant Bergdahl is now in question. First, there's Bergdahl himself. On Sunday, the administration portrayed him as something of a hero. He served the United States with honor and distinction. But today, the news is the Army is preparing to... How about the five Taliban released in the deal just yesterday? The transfer of these detainees did not pose uh, a significant threat to the United States. But today? Is there the possibility of uh, some of them trying to return to uh, activities that are detrimental to us? Absolutely. Finally, there's Bergdahl's father, growing his beard till his son was freed, clearly willing to do anything to help. He joined the president in the Rose Garden Saturday to announce the release. Since then, we've learned that last week he tweeted directly to a Taliban spokesman. Quote, I am still working to free all Guantanamo prisoners. God will repay for the death of every Afghan child. So that's ABC. Um, everything the Obama administration told us, whether it's about Bergdahl, whether it's about the Taliban, whether it's about Bergdahl's father, all of that, it turns out, uh, is not true. So even ABC saying, hey, look, your president has been lying to you. Now, very quickly, number to call if you want to join, 888-589-8840 is the number to call, 888-589-8840. I want to talk just for a, uh, a few moments here in this last segment about the outcome of the Senate primary in Mississippi last night. Uh, Senator Chris McDaniel, the Tea Party favorite conservative guy, talks about the Constitution all the time, taking on the incumbent, Senator Thad Cochran, been in Washington, D.C. for 41 years. Uh, and uh, so it was kind of the new generation, upcoming generation. I mean, you can look, you can look at Chris McDaniel really as a, as a millennial uh, candidate. He's young. He's vigorous. Uh, he's got energy. He's youthful, and he's saying, look, it's time for a, a new generation. The old generation, uh, sort of symbolized by, by Senator Cochran, it's time for a new rising younger generation. So, you know, you think about it. Don't give up on the Tea Party. Don't give up on the millennials way too soon uh, for that, and this could be an example. Now, it's um, the, the conservative groups. Here's one of the ways you can tell what's going on in, in this race because now it's going to be a – runoff on June 24, because neither one of these two candidates was able to crest 50 percent. Very close. Chris McDaniel, 49.7 percent, and Thad Cochran, 48.9 percent. Third party candidate bled off just enough votes to keep either of them from getting a majority. So there's going to be a runoff, just the two of them. Now, the conservative groups that are in this race are jubilant. They're pumped. Uh, you've got uh, Freedom Works, Club for Growth, Tea Party Patriots, they're all enthused. They're excited because Chris McDaniel won 
the plurality, they are going to throw more money and effort and energy into this race. Uh, meanwhile, the Cochrane campaign seems to be out of energy. They seem to be out of out of drive. They just seem to be sort of on autopilot. There's no enthusiasm there. There's no energy. The Club for Growth is actually calling on Senator Cochran actually to step down, just to drop out rather than run uh, for another uh, three weeks. Now, here's the point that Breitbart makes. Runoffs tend to favor insurgent primary challenger candidates, as seen in Senator Ted Cruz's victory over Lieutenant Governor David Dewhurst in 2012. Quote, the candidate with the strongest ground game has a clear advantage in a runoff scenario, Freedom Works President Matt Kibbe said in a statement. When Ted Cruz upset David Dewhurst in the Texas GOP Senate primary in 2012, Dewhurst carried 44.6% of the primary vote to Cruz's 34.2%. That's in the primary, not the runoff, but in the primary, Dewhurst 44.6%, Cruz 34.2%. So he was 10 points up on Cruz in the primary. But in the runoff, Cruz swept uh, the runoff with 56.8% to Dewhurst, 43.2%. So Cruz wound up winning in the runoff by what is that 13 and a half points. So the energy typically in these runoffs heavily in favor of the challenger. And the establishment here is, is probably the most telling sign of them all, Carl Rove, symbol of the Republican establishment, they bailed on Cochran. They bailed out. They've thrown in the towel. American Crossroads will be pulling out of the Republican primary race for U.S. Senate in Mississippi and will not be spending money on the runoff between incumbent Thad Cochran and challenger Chris McDaniel. Uh, and uh, the, the Haley Barber worked with them, worked for them. They are not going to spend any more money on behalf of Thad Cochran. So that's a sign, again, uh, nobody is counting their chickens before they hatch, but it's a sign uh, that even the Republican establishment realizes that Senator Cochran at this point looks like a lost cause. Well, let's grab some phone calls. 888-589-8840 is the number to call. 888-589-8840. Let's go to James, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. James, welcome. What's on your mind? Hey, Mr. Brian, what's going on? Hey, doing fine. What's up? Hey, so I'm basically calling. I'm uh, I'm only 22 years old, and basically I'm just afraid for the future of our country. Um, I look at Obama, and I look at everything that's going on, and I'm just I'm dumbfounded to why doesn't over, like half of America see what what's going on, and um, especially with kids my age, I know they don't follow into politics, but it's just. It's just it upsets me so much to see the treason that happened and for him to put America in a vulnerable standpoint for releasing those those members of the Taliban. And I just I don't know. I just felt like I had a I had to vent. I'm sorry. Well, listen, James. No, I appreciate that. And, and here, here's my question for you. Now, James is a millennial guy. He's the one the Republicans say these millennial guys, they're gone. Their values are shot. Uh, th their history. We got to accept the inevitable. We got to change our entire political strategy. If we want to try to reach the millennials, here's James. He's as he's as unhappy with President Obama's conduct as president as as any of us and disappointed in his fellow millennials for not being more informed. But let me ask you, James, and, and you give everybody, I think, in this list, listening audience reason to hope uh, that all is not lost with the millennials because you're right in the middle of that generation. Let me ask you this. Why do you think that your contemporaries in the millennial generation, why is it that so many of them seem so uninformed about politics? What's your best guess about that my to be honest i guess my best guess would be just mainstream media they're they're misled they're misinformed and most of their parents they're not really educated and to be honest i'm actually an african-american male and i did not vote for obama just because he was african-american to me that's unpatriotic and that's the most idiotic thing someone can even do and even if you were to vote for Obama because he was an African-American, Obama's father was from Nigeria. So no ties to Obama's uh, African heritage has ever been a slave. So he can never, ever relate to African-Americans on that standpoint besides Mary and Michelle Obama. Now, let me ask this, James. So you're saying that you think millennials of your generation, partly they're uninformed because they depend on the mainstream media for whatever news they get. 
You know, and it's like yes, Mark sir. Twain said. Mark Twain said in his day, you know, if you if you don't read the newspapers, you're uninformed. If you do read the newspapers, you are misinformed. Same thing true about mainstream media today. Well, James, what about you? How do you stay informed? How do you educate yourself on these issues? Well, I constantly stay informed on AFR radio. I uh, research stuff. When people tell me something, I just don't go for it. I actually research it, search the truth for it. I also listen to a lot of uh, Glenn Beck and uh, Blaze TV. And I'm just, I refuse to to just become just everybody else in America. I refuse to become accepting everything the world tells me. I, I have to seek the truth, and that's right. my biggest thing. Well, good for you, truth. James. Well, listen, thanks for calling, and uh, thanks for setting an example for your contemporaries. One last call. Let's go to Jessica, Kentucky. Jessica, I'm sorry. I've only got about 30 seconds. I'd love to hear what you got to say. Can you get right to the point? Tell me what's on your mind. Yes, sir. I'm an active duty service member, and I'm calling in reference to um, the Virgil issue. And what I don't understand and what I would like to know is if this service member, by all accounts, by peers and people that were on the ground, left willingly from the installation that he was on. Yes. Then he was AWOL. And in saying that, after you've been AWOL for a certain amount of time, then you're dropped from role, meaning that you are removed from that unit. Correct. You're no longer a part of that unit, and you're no longer receiving pay. And then they pick him up like they did and brought him back here. I mean... Have we been paying him this whole time? Yeah, well, and Jessica, I, I, I appreciate your call. I got to let you go because we're out of time, but thanks for calling. And here's the sad thing. He has received two promotions while he's been a deserter, a wall, and he's eligible for a third. See you tomorrow. The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast do not necessarily